Is there something different today? Because this e-commerce website looks calmer than it usually is. Well, here we have this responsive e-commerce watch slider with title, some text and button that is tagging along to each watch slide like a baby holding on to their mom. I hope you guys like slider animation for both text as well as watch. It goes backwards and forwards using previous and next buttons. Did you guys see the cute transition from large to small screen for both text and watches? The whole thing is responsive, so the text and buttons are vertically aligned on small screen while horizontally aligned on large screen. For medium screens of tablet, we also align these elements horizontally aligned. I hope with this demo I convinced you guys to subscribe to my channel, so let's go towards file setup. For this home section, we will use three images of watch. These are the same boring images that I have been using everywhere, and I am gonna bore you with for the rest of this e-commerce website playlist because I am lazy to get new ones. Anyways, let's open our VS Code browser and hope today it is working not showing us some attitude. Time to write some HTML for this e-commerce watch slider. Alright, so in HTML, the main container home container holds the entire slider component. Well, the slide wraps all slider items, which are contained within multiple item elements. Each item contains two main sections, image that holds the watch images, and content that contains the text elements like the title H1, description text, and a button for navigation. This button is supposed to take us to the About section, so in href we added About section name with hash. We also created the button in our previous video, where we coded CSS defaults and resets, whose link you can find in the description. Which means we don't have to style the buttons today, they already look cute anyway. Apparently I have a text file, where I was supposed to keep all my icons in, so I can copy paste, but I forgot about it. I will update the text file with icons later for the next videos. If anyone is wondering the icons we are using are font awesome icons. Now copy paste item class to more times one below the other inside the slide container and change the images, nothing else. We have row class in item to display flex everything into center and wrap it with flex wrap. I will show you guys the default classes like row we used in HTML when we get to CSS so you guys don't miss anything. The directional container holds to buttons for previous and next slide navigation to navigate through the three items we have. Remember in this entire playlist of responsive complete modern e-commerce website, we won't use anything else besides HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I don't know if it's a flex or something bad, but it is how it is. Please change the slide from being class to ID. Time for some CSS makeover. Let's quickly go through the default CSS styles and classes used in this video today. We also have link in the description for each of these CSS defaults and resets if you are having trouble stopping the video and see the code. Oh, here is our container and row class I was talking about earlier. I love to just add this class everywhere. So be prepared to see this row class in literally every video in this playlist. I am addicted to row class. Anyways, let's see the heading text that we used here in text defaults. These are our button defaults to create aqua buttons like this. This will be the only button style that we will use throughout this website. That why I will scroll slowly to show you guys this aquatic button here. I don't know what to call this style of button, so I call it aquatic. Anyways, let's start writing CSS. We just need to scroll all the way down to another universe just to find this home hero section just to start writing CSS. Starting from this home class, it centers the home container both vertically and horizontally on the page, occupying 95% of the viewport width and 100% of the height. 
It also hides any content that overflows this container. Content class makes a flex container to allow flexible alignment of its child element left class. It used to have a lot of classes besides left, but now we are left with left and nothing more. Directional class positions navigation controls left and right arrow buttons at the bottom of the home container. The slide class acts as a container for all item elements with display flex allowing flexible alignment both vertically and horizontally. Position relative enabling absolute positioning of child elements and height and width of 100% ensuring it takes up the full height and width of the parent container. The row class was not sitting well in slide, so I didn't use it. Item elements are absolutely positioned, filling up the slide area, and have various transition effects apply that we will see later on. It also has a row class to centralize everything. The purpose of this CSS class is to style the image container within each slide by adding spacing and alignment using margin top and margin left setting its height to 65% of the viewport and defining the initial opacity and size for animation using opacity and transform scale properties. The transition of 1.5 seconds ensures smooth transitions when these values change. The image inside image container maintains aspect ratio, height of 80% sets the image height and animation jump adds a jumping effect of watch. This jumping animation is created using keyframes by moving the image up by 20 pixels and back down. If you like to make it more or less jumping, then just change the 20 pixels value. If you guys ever want to check out the restaurant and portfolio websites, then feel free to do so from the link in the description. Also, if you do want to see more cute web development content, then you need to subscribe to my channel and turn on a notification bell. The image before pseudo element is used to create a blurred shadow effect beneath the image by positioning it absolutely, setting a dark background color with partial transparency, and applying a large blur filter for added visual depth. In this CSS snippet, we use content left to position an element absolutely at 13% from the top and align to the left with a fixed width of 311 pixels while initially hiding it with display none. We have added spacing beneath the H1 heading in the left section. Let's see the heading and text with display block first. We will later change it back to display none. The left H1 class adds a 10 pixels margin below the heading, while the left day class sets the font size to 1 to rem. Applies a secondary text color, adds a 20 pixels margin below the description, and limits its maximum width to 400 pixels for layout control. For some reason, button refused to go to the left with class name and only went to the left with the ID name, so we are using btn container. Now we want these arrows inside the button to not clinch to the text, so we will add margin left of 10 pixels, and then we also don't want to keep the arrows above the text. So we will get it in line with the text by using margin top of 3 pixels or 2.5 pixels, whatever works best. We are done with left side, so let's make it display none again. Here is the thing, we will only style first and second item elements to save from too much coding and use JavaScript to cycle through all the items in the slide and declare them first item or second item. That being said, the first item image is hidden and scaled down, while the second item is fully visible and at its normal size. This controls smooth transitions between slides. Now we will create keyframes animation of displaying content and sliding away from content and then add it to the first and second item element left. To define animations for vanishing and appearing content in the left section, the keyframes are used. Keyframe content vanish animation smoothly fades out and moves the content upwards while applying a strong blur effect. Whereas for keyframes content scene, it makes the content fade in and slide up from below with a subtle blur, creating a visually engaging transition effect for your elements. Please change from the value of 100 pixels to 100% in these keyframes. Let me just clear up the cross-browser setup code to show you guys the keyframes clearly.
Now we will display block the left elements into visibility for both first and second element. Remember we have to vanish one element and make the other scene with some cool animation and transition, so we will call the different animations we created using keyframes in each of the elements. We will animate both left text over one second with a smooth easing effect, playing only once and then keeping its final state. CSS seems to be done, but what about responsive CSS with media queries hum? Here is the thing, everything looks perfect on small screens, and then suddenly darkness overtakes the piece, and our layout gets upside down, like that one TV show. The bigger the screen, the worse it gets, especially on the computer laptop screens, above 1024 pixels. So let's fix it fast with CSS media queries and make this home hero section of watch slider responsive. We will start with screen size above 768 pixels first. In order to save time, I will write a few things I remember from earlier, and then I will figure out live how to make it responsive from there. To ensure the entire item container stays in the center on large screens, we set a top value of 6 rem for item. Additionally, we add a left value of 5% to the left class to avoid sticking to the container's walls. Also, we have image margin top of 15 rem and height of 100%. Ignoring the social distancing in large screen, let's go total blitz screen size for now. It looks good, but the image seems to be a little too on the left, but let's confirm it by changing the background color. You guys see the image sneakily trying to take up text space as well. Let me make the width of the image container short and test which max width works best for this image container. I am also wondering if object fit cover looks good or object fit contain on the image itself. Yeah, now it seems better. So let's go back to the code and apply these changes. Starting with object fit being cover rather than contain. Also, the image container max width will be in media queries rather than here, because it is viewport width unit, and we don't want to disrupt the piece of small screens. So now our max width for image container is 45 viewport width above 768 pixels screen. Our left container also seems a little too on the left, so let's fix it. So 9% seems good for me, but you guys should always play around these stuff in the browser to fix stuff, it is the best way to debug. After getting the left value to 9%, let's finally address our large screen of laptops where social distancing is a thing and put some max width on the item container, so these elements have no choice but to come close to each other. Not that close, now we gotta figure out the perfect max width value here. Also, this entire item container is a little too much at top, we will address that later. So now our item has top value of 7 rem and max width of 900 pixels. It's perfect, but let me just quickly change the value of image margin top, and then we go JavaScript. This will be a little teeny tiny baby JavaScript code, so let's quickly be done with this. Remember we are using JavaScript to cycle through all the items list, where one get to be displayed, and the next hides using our previous and next buttons. When the next button is clicked, the first item element is moved to the end of the slide container using a pen child, creating a seamless transition to the next slide. If someone in the universe is wondering the append child method adds a node as the last child of a specified parent element, moving it to the end of that element. When the prev button is clicked, the last item element is moved to the beginning of the slide container using prepend, allowing you to smoothly navigate back to the previous slide. So let's see if JavaScript is working as well as everything and then wrap this up with this finalized outcome of our code. Good thing that prev and next buttons are doing their jobs, 
So now it's time for me stop my blabbering and let you guys enjoy the rest of the outcome demo. If you have been dealing with my dead humor for 15 minutes straight, then 